Hi, everybody. It's Elise Murray here with another Martini Talk. So I'm hanging out today with my good friend, Eileen Dong. She's Miss Texas, and we've got a lot of things to talk about. Her, her platform is on human trafficking and all kinds of problems that we're having with regards to that. Thank you for being here, Eileen. It's nice to see you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Murray, for having me. It is uh, my honor to be here. Uh, yes, like you mentioned, I have, um, as uh, Ms. Texas, my platforms are against sex trafficking, domestic violence, and sexual abuse. Uh, as some of you might be aware that October is the Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and I have since started the, a campaign called DVAM365. You know, I work with a lot of the nonprofit organizations, whether on the committee, board, advisory board, volunteer. Um, some of them, they were like, oh, it's now afterwards. So we're kind of on recovery mode. I'm like, oh, uh -uh, no, you know, um, you know, most people know, um, I'm, you know, I support all kinds of causes, dom uh, domestic violence, as well as breast cancer, Alzheimer, uh, you know, the American Heart Foundation. But I wanted people to know that the work doesn't just end after October 31st. And it, it's not like, okay, sorry, you know, that was the awareness month and then 11 months later. And, you know, as a matter of fact, I wanted to share the stats with you. We're both in the greater Houston area. And uh, just the, the number alone during the COVID um, has gone up for yeah. both domestic violence and human trafficking for almost 50%. Wow, wow. Yeah, and, and that was just like, you know, it wasn't even an up, kind of like the most up-to-date data. I'm sure we can find most up-to-date data and I'll uh, share the link with uh, Ms. Murray so that you can share with all. I work with, you know, the National Veterans Chamber of Commerce um, to fight against trauma. Uh, and as you might know that there's the sex uh, sexual assault in the military as well, very unfortunately. And uh, not to point fingers, uh, when I did the interview with the National Chamber of Commerce Executive Director, sex trafficking, you know, the, it's a business, honestly, for the pimps, um, buying and selling. So if there's no demand, then there will be no supply. Unfortunately, Navy and Marines, when they dock the port, guess what they're doing, you know? So these are the topics that I wanted to mention as well. So I also have a show in partnership with the National Chamber of Commerce under the military time talking about these things. And it's called the Miss Texas Show, which we'll share the link with you as well. Yes. And, um, Yes, and I'm the spokesperson with one of the Houston-based uh, nonprofit organization called Hope PYX Global. It primarily helps people who are survivors, victims from all backgrounds that are, uh, sub, uh, you know, victims of uh, sex trafficking, sexual abuse, and domestic violence. And we also try to bridge the cultural stigma between the Asian community and the providers. And, you know, I, I'm Asian myself. And uh, just to share a little bit of how I got started, a lot of people like, you know, the platform and this, like, what's the relationship? Right, right. Yeah, so honestly, it's like, I think it's all intercommingle. First of all, to talk about the crime itself and the data. People who are, uh, you know, victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, are more likely to be trafficked. And uh, if you don't already know, unfortunately, you know, uh, I, I'm proud that Houston is the world center for oil and gas. Unfortunately, you know, that creates um, an, another opportunity for business in the pink board that, you know, the, the, the per diem, the hotels pay, you know, provides the environment. So the oil and gas field had a lot of community leaders like you and me that are working very actively, you know, lots of companies are on board against that. Unfortunately, Houston, as far as number is concerned, is the number one city for sex trafficking. So, so yeah. It's terrible. And, you know, I've got a lot of people that are in my world, right? My, my sweet life world. And mm -hmm. everybody that lives in the sweet life world wants things to be better in the community. And so a lot of things that you mentioned with regards to the uptake 
since COVID and, and the uptake in divorce and the uptake in child abuse, the uptake in domestic violence in general, it's, it's not surprising, but with some, um, you know, I have a degree in psychology. It's not surprising. It's just sad. And, it, and we need to address it. And we need to address at the core of it, there's a mental health issue. You know, there's a lot of problems that start because there's a problem inside of that person who would do such a thing to another human being. And so there's a lot of work being done to try to cut that because they're anticipating. I don't know. I'm sure that you're meeting with people as well because this is your platform. A lot of people are anticipating in the world of mental health a lot more problems going forward as we come out of this because people who may or may not have been diagnosed as having a problem have really been pushed into having what they may or may not have actually seen in themselves because they've been stuck at home and they're weary because of finances and of course people are not working and their jobs are working from home or they're not working at all and there's the financial strain as well all of those acerbate anything that's going on that could spark a, a domestic violence uh situation in someone's home as you know i mean I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here but for the viewers and for the listeners on the podcast it's all connected yes all yes connected. yeah yeah and, and thank you for mentioning that you know that's some something i was gonna uh, mention as well but you know um as uh, the, with the background in psychology and the mental health absolutely and it goes both ways because of the unusual circumstances this year we are all pivoting like you and i wouldn't be able to you know i always say um when there's some kind of uh, difficulty there's an opportunity so we had the opportunity to connect because of covid so right. thanks to that unfortunately a lot of people were suffering just today i saw you know some of the people that i know their friends are suffering from covid and based on the post today um the patient hit you know a bad fall, not not to recovering. So they're calling for recovering and uh, you know for praying. And I hope that everyone will join us in the prayer because that that is a huge thing. And and a lot of the mental health uh, as a result, like you mentioned, you know from from divorce, from from family abuse. I believe that you know that there are so many cases that might not even have hit the news but the most recent one um that you know one of the police officers were shot and uh, the gentleman was who uh, that was the abuser and the female i'm not sure they were married was the victim and i be, I, I don't quote me on that but i think they are both hispanic and this i wanted to mention that because you know i'm asian you know why and they're hispanic but I think the officer was probably African American. So, like you know, this happened to people everywhere. Of all walks um, of life, yeah. It's exactly. Not, it's not a cultural thing. You know, a lot of times people will like to say, um, you know, well, that doesn't happen to my people, or that doesn't happen to my group, or that can't happen to my family. And the reality is, is that it it, it hits across every single spectrum, every single culture every single ethnicity there's not an ethnicity or a cultural uh group of people that don't see domestic violence sexual assault it's everywhere and it's a problem that's why i feel like from the psychological perspective it is a mental health issue that we need to address and a societal issue that we need to address it cannot be allowed to continue to be shoved under the carpet Right. right. It, it needs to be, as your platform is, awareness. People need to know. People need to stay abreast of the, what's going on and, the, and that it's not stopping. You know, it's, you know, like you said earlier about the breast cancer, you know, for many years, 10 plus years, I did a breast cancer calendar in the community in Houston and gave it to everybody that wanted to have it to, to make money for that cause. And October was like this mad rush of television and interviews and all this stuff because it was Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yet all year long, I was working with mothers and families and children who were in the situation where their mothers were diagnosed with breast cancer. It, it's a year long thing. It's all the time. It's when it, even when we're sleeping in Houston, Texas, it's happening over across the world to somebody else. It's not something that's just to the United States. It's a human thing. It's a human being thing. And uh, yeah. it's one of those human problems that we need to resolve. And, you know, when I was in India, same thing. I was in India. 
Um, I was an ambassador for the Hope Endowment and I was there photographing children in the orphanages. And those children had been pulled off the streets at two and three and four years old, caught in sexual assault, caught in being slaves of sex to these people that I thought, oh my God, how in the world can anybody want to do that with a child? Like, it's just, it's not even conscionable for me to even understand it. That's why I, at my very core believe when we talk about this specific issue, specific to children um, and abuse of women, anything that's of that sort, it's a mental illness issue for me. I mean, I, you know, I could be probably argued with somebody else, some other expert on it, but I really believe I'd stand my ground heels in the sand and say, no, it's a mental health problem that we need to all take care of worldwide. It's, it's, a, it's an important thing that we need to do. We're tasked to make everybody better. And this is one of those things that cannot continue. That's right. You know, with the sad, sad situation, I've got good news for you. you got the new ally. I will stay in a fight with you until everyone is free. That's, you know, my slogan. And then you're totally right. You know, you it's interesting you mentioned India. And just this morning, I was scrolling down. I think that was Instagram. And one of the posts about child marriage. And that's about, you know, child at the age of about 13 or things like that. So there is a whole set of problems. And uh, I, I just hope that, you know, in my lifetime, I'm able to kind of bring as many, uh, the, the, the awareness to as many people as I possibly can. But, you know, I also wanted to mention, you mentioned the child abuse um, in my channel, the Miss Texas show, uh, November. Yeah, so we've got four, um, several days so uh, to go. But in, in general, we did two sets, part one and part two for the Boy Scout of America, uh, you know, the claims, as you might already know, that they filed bankruptcy beginning of the year because of the claims. But as a result of that, just like I mentioned, there's pros and cons in, in many of the situations, many of the cases that has passed the statute of limitation now are open because of this. So we had like two shows, then you can, you know, watch uh, on the link that I will be linking as oh, well. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I'll make sure. I'll yeah, I'll, yeah I'll but it, it. it's so sad. I'm, oh, my God. I, I don't have the data in front of me, but, but I recall it was, what, 70,000 cases or something over the course of like the last than uh, 100 years. And uh, they were, some of them, they were abused by, you know, multiple people. Like, you know, it's like, you know, you, you have a child, I don't, but you know, my family, they have like, you know, I have nieces and nephews. Just imagine if it's your own child, how oh, would you dead. feel? They would be dead, Eileen, they'd be dead because I have a 45 and I know how to shoot it just as easy as I know how to shoot my camera. And if someone <laughs> did that to one of my babies, either of my daughter or my son or my son-in-law or any of my children for that, fat, that matter, they would not be breathing air anymore. I would just send them straight to Jesus. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's where they have to go is straight to Jesus because Jesus is the only thing that can fix that. I mean, I just, this is the problem. It's just a problem. And I just really, I'm so excited about working with you, bringing awareness, sharing this with our viewers and our listeners. And, and I want us to continue this conversation going forward. I know that you've got some stuff coming up in January. What, what's going on in January? So January is the Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Just like, you know, uh, a lot of the people know October is uh, Breast Cancer Month. So October is also uh, a Domestic Violence Awareness. So in our industry, we say that uh, January is another big month. That's for Human Trafficking Awareness. Yes. Yeah. So in that, we're going we're gonna to touch on that in January at another time. We're going to do this episode like we just did, and then we're going to do another one. And we're going to continue to have the conversation so that our people together, both your people and my people, can hear and understand and, and help be a part of the solution. Because it's going to take all of us coming together to make it stop. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things that's just got to be continuously in front of somebody to understand. It's easy to get busy. It's easy to get caught up with things that you have to do. But to think about it on a regular basis that at every moment of the day, someone's child is being stolen, somebody's being hit, somebody's being trafficked, somebody's being hurt, 
by a loved one. And, and it's our responsibility as a community to come together and to try to make a difference and make that stop. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, I also, you, you touched based upon like, you know, this is not just a one race, one gender or anything, even like, you know, I did another uh, show about the LGBTQ community and that's a topic that's not talked about. So when I took my stand, against the the domestic violence for instance you know as um, last year this year because of the pandemic everything was virtual mm -hmm. uh, but last year we had like a in-person visual and they announced not only the name so t typically they'll say name but they actually announced the age and just like just now when we were talking about you know the the child marriage and child sexual abuse i had goosebumps on me and that day i, I was feeling the same we were all holding the candles and they were announcing the name and guess what they were like as young as babies of several months as old of you know uh, elder lady of over 80 years old so that's why we say you know they don't have any target or eyes everyone can be a victim regardless of your age race gender nationality social economic status you know anything so we just wanted to just like you say we keep need to keep bring this to the front of people so that they can be reminded because you just never know. And like last time I was talking to one of the advocates and she was, ha she thinks that she thought she was happily married and then she got divorced and, you know, because of the abuse. So she started going to support groups and everything. Then she went back and said, oh my God, that my ex was a narcissist. And that's part of the abuse. Then you talked about mental health, you know, the mental health itself, like a lot of the people, including myself, I thought domestic abuse is domestic violence, but it's the violence abuse is just one of it. There's, you know, the emotional abuse the psychological abuse, the financial abuse, and the sexual abuse. So yes, I, you know, I, uh, I'm so honored and I wanted to thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk to your platform and uh, your audience about this matter. It is, um, as a global citizen, it doesn't have border, uh, you know, it's for everyone. Exactly. Well, I wanted to thank you for being here today. We all are gonna look forward to seeing your beautiful face many many more times on the martini talk show because there's so much stuff that you and i have to do to change the world together and listen viewers listen if you found any value in this please do me a favor and like and share and don't forget to ring that bell so that you're notified each week when we drop another episode thank you so much for being here today cheers to you i've got my water over here in my glass when we're virtual our virtual martini talks and uh, we'll see you guys soon on the channel take care <laughs>